So guys, uh, hello and uh, good evening and welcome to another brand new episode of Learning Series by Juno School of Business. Fortunately, I'm sure that people who've been uh, associated with us would understand that this is a platform wherein we uh, develop your skills that would aid your corporate journey and make you better sales professionals. And we all know that sales is one of the most rewarding careers one can undertake. And at Juno School, this is the endeavor that we want to undertake to shape better sales professionals for tomorrow. In fact, salespeople are the one who actually drive it for every organization and significantly contribute to revenue generation. More so, if you realize, you know, uh, sales is more of a life skill, wherein we've been selling ourselves to people maybe during a campus interview or maybe a job selection or maybe for salary hikes during an appraisal and also in the personal space wherein you want to convince your friends and family for certain ideas or your thoughts. So sales is something that we've always been doing. It's a life skill. That's what we believe at Juno. And more so, it's a human desire for each and everyone to grow in life. So the better you can sell yourself to people, both in your personal and professional space, you grow better in life. Now, the irony is that sales is not a skill which is taught in any school or college in a structured format. And that's where, you know, at Juno School, we believe that we want to bridge this gap and that we do through interactive online sessions uh, with sessions with industry experts. And also we've customized it in a two-month training module coupled with uh, career placement support and, of course, you know, how to, you know, uh, uh, create a great LinkedIn profile, mock interview. So basically training you on sales skills and also giving you support for people who want to make it big in the sales business, who want to uh, catapult their sales journeys. So that's what Juno is all about. You can always know more about us at junoschool.org or always schedule a chat with us at hello at junoschool.org. Now it's time for me to welcome the industry expert for the day, Sujoy. Sujoy has been working with organizations like Informatica, Herman, uh, HCL, Capgemini, SAP, TCS. As far as his education goes, he's an alumni of NIT Durgapur, IIM Indore, and Harvard Business School. In today's session, Sujay is going to talk about his experience in the world of sales and what are his learnings, the practical learnings. So how do you sharpen your sales skills? So it's going to be more of an experience sharing that he's going to do and what is that we can gather as salespeople and make sure that we try to implement his learning so that we are able to sharpen the skills when it comes to selling. Thank you so much, Sujay, for uh, squeezing out time. And I'm sure, you know, over the weekend, it is really, uh, you know, we kind of obliged to take that time out for us and be part of the Juno community. Welcome once again. And on this note, I request if Sujoy could take over and share his insights with us. Over to you, Sujay. Sure, Himatri. Thanks a lot, everyone. I hope my voice is clear to everyone yeah. there. Thanks to all of you also for taking time. My pleasure to share my insights uh, with all of you. Uh, I want to have a more of a practical knowledge sharing as Himadri mentioned and feel free to ask questions. You can, we can spend some time if anybody is uh, comfortable to share their sales situation, whatever perspective I can share my insights to that. Uh, I think there's a lot of people coming in. Uh, it's, it's difficult to do an introduction, but yeah, just a brief one from myself. Uh, as Imadi mentioned, I have over 20 plus years experience in sales, uh, business development, mostly into business to business. Uh, I have worked across India, US, and presently now I'm in Sweden, I'm living here for past 12 years. If you can see the background, that's of Northern Lights, if you many, some of you might know. It's a lovely, lovely uh, thing to see if you can get a chance. So happy to be here. Uh, maybe to just get gather some... Uh, audience views and your perspective, I have uh, requested Imadri to create a few polls. So Imadri, if you do not mind, uh, bring up the question number one. Sure. And this is an anonymous poll, so please feel free to share your frank views and opinion. And then we all can see the results. It will be good insights for all of us as well. Great, guys. So I'm launching the poll and the first question has multiple choices, right? So you can select multiple choices, all yours. So, so Jay, we're done with 25 people who've taken the poll out of... Uh, yeah, let's see the results. I'm also yeah. curious to know. I think everybody is curious, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's the results for us. Yeah, that's a, that's a good mix. So I believe the people here in really love why they have been are into sales. They have made a conscious decision 
and certainly they see sales as a path to make their life better i think people wants to have it, take the driver's seat take up the responsibility right so good thank you i think uh, this gives an insight for the people here in the uh, call as well to learn from the poll let's launch the second question as well Mark. sure so these are the results Good. I think very standard uh, view, I believe, if there are some discussions, <laughs> but there are 28% people who are very good, I believe, I'm happy to be in sales, lucky, that's good. That's the way to go. But I'll just give an example of this question. This is a question, this is called a negative reverse question. So yeah. I put this question, not only that. So you should think about such questions to ask to your customers as well, to your partners or wherever, even to your managers not only means what what will not happen if you don't do something so this is called a negative reverse question okay <clears throat> let's bring in the third question as well then we're done with sure. the polling. that's the third question uh so this is a single selection so these are the results that we have for the third question so Jay. so that's good i think this uh majority of professions we believe that all professions are mostly all professions have some in part of selling right i think that was himadri was also mentioning in his initial talk. So we are selling in our lives, personal and professional life, not only salespeople in the call. So also you need to appreciate on the other side, that's also important when you're trying to sell to the customers, they're also selling. So that's also very important that they are selling their time, they are selling their expertise. So it's not only we are selling, they are buying. So I see it is sales and sales, not sales versus buying. So you should see, try to see the, them as in your camp as well. So I think that's also good learning to take. So I think these are good uh, quizzes uh, in terms of to, um, for me to feel the audience and also for you to feel about uh, what others are saying. Yeah. Yeah. could mute all. Yeah. Just let me share my screen now. You all can see my screen. Yeah, it's visible today. Yeah. So I think uh, how much time we have at hand? We have uh, close to 45 minutes now. So we have gone and done some little bit of a health check within the audience. How do we feel? I think all of you, uh, I would say congratulations to be in the sales role. I have been there for 20 years. I enjoy every day. The, the bad thing about being sales is that I don't know what I could do anything else, you know, so uh, you get you you get a feel of it so much that you don't find anything else that you could do. But as you say, as you see, every profession has uh, some amount of selling involved. So let's go ahead and um, I, I would like to share some of the skills. I think we we went through the poll question number one, why I am into sales, I believe most <laughs> want to take responsibility be the driver's seat put food on the table for the company as well so that's a uh, that's a emotional aspect also involved in it right and if we go next poll that we did why I, what i don't like into sales i think the most about the stress factor or not generating the expected uh, financial returns for ourselves so how we can do that and the I think we agreed that most professions do that. So I will try to uh, uh, take you to a few skills uh, and we can spend some time as well. If you, are, so, you know, sales is a team effort. That's a very important skill I would like to share with all of you. I, I don't know, but I used to feel initially in my sales career that, hey, I am the hero and I am the hero or I am the zero. So, uh, and then, it actually takes a lot of negative on, on our, myself and also that you take too much pressure on yourself. Hey, this deal I want because of me, it brings in positive ego. You become <laughs> rash, you become oppressive. You feel you are the God, you have done a very great achievement. And on the negative side, if you lose something, doesn't happen, you take too much upon yourself. So, but both, both are actually wrong. You need to feel that sales is a team sport and everybody in your company is there to make you successful make the customer successful that by mean that you should start reaching out to everybody in the organization and, and leverage their help from a legal team to even your ceo how can you help so i think that's a learning that i have taken through a career to believe that truly that sales is a team sport and everybody in the organization is there to make available and you have to go and ask for help people will not know you have to show them the customer's vision your vision bring their success as your success right i think this connects to skill number two what i have put in 
that you have to lead because sales in uh, in our career we have to show the leadership without anybody reporting to us so in many companies many other roles you have a managers and people reporting they listen to you but in the sales you have to go to every department connecting to skin number 1 it's a team sports so you have to go to every department so every, every, function, every function and ask their help seek their help and why will they help you have to show the common success you have to show that their success is also involved in what is being done it is just not you or the sales person that's going to win it's for the company it's for the common goal of the company and the organization so i think these are the very two learnings i would say connected to each other that it's a team sport and you have to show leadership and i think that's another benefit i gain from sales is that the leadership qualities also get developed over time that i have seen with myself even if you come with a high iq you need to develop your emotional quotient that's how you will be able to lead you will be able to be passionate and compassionate with others show their success been their success and then you will be able to uh, lead a team sport and then if you do that you will see there's a positive spiral happening everybody wants to work with you everybody wants to celebrate your success and you are able to leverage the Uh, skills of all the team members hey there could be a contact uh, you are trying to break into a contract with a customer you do not know that person maybe a person who is down below in the organization a technical person or a legal person is a friends with that person right so you can open up the you can build up the network power of many so there are so many positives you can think of but just to summarize i would say that if you have to take two messages from my this session take that sales is a team sport and learn to lead right not lead just by someone is reporting that's not called leadership that is more like managership right learn and how do you lead you have to bring your their success to your success align that common goal i think this is a, a top two skills i would say that one needs to learn from sales i don't know uh, we can open up for the chat but any thoughts from any of the participants they would like to share very happy to hear from you how, how do you feel have you been considering sales as a single person role or you are doing it already as a team role how do you think about these two skills anybody would like to share hello yeah yeah am i audible yeah audible thank you for giving the opportunity and uh, really the way you people have started and being a part of uh, a team member i'm very happy and very much excited also and i'm completely agree sales is the teamwork and leader means how to show the part not uh, by the appointment letter or any letter i'm become a manager leader means always i have to give the demo sorry first i have to give the introductions i am sanjay kumar uh, from branchi i am having 15 year of the experience in sales and i am working right now at danon india you might be knowing the danon yeah good yeah yeah, yeah. i am based at branchi and uh, six people is uh, reporting to me and i am strongly believe your view Uh, i must give the demo and with my behavior with my attitude people must impressed and uh, i should add value uh, value in his life to upgrade yeah. his life or upgrade his skill just becoming observer uh, become observing me they will enhance their skill that is the uh, true definition of the leader as far as my view is concerned yeah that's the test of leadership sanjay thanks for jumping in means you know leader is not a manager people reporting to you and doing things for you or doing things as you tell them to do just because they are reporting and you you manage their appraisal and you manage their career growth that's not managership and i think leadership that's why sales is a very good opportunity for every one of you to develop your leadership skills that's why you will find uh, most ceos or most uh, business owners Ha, come from a sales background because they learn it that way that leadership how to lead how to bring the team together that's one of the reasons it's not just being the revenue bringing person but that leadership qualities is a must have 
for any successful salesperson or every successful salesperson. So you 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 should, as Sanjay said, not only with your team members, you should be able to go to any part of the organization and able to uh, bring them into the your uh, journey with the customer. Be, bring them into the deal. Take their help. Right? That's very important. Thanks, Sanjay, for jumping and sharing your thoughts. I really agree. Thank you. Anybody else would like to share? Yeah, I think anybody feels also sharing. Maybe I means I was like that. I I didn't think earlier in my sales career that it's a team sport. Hey, I am talking to the customer. I am doing all the hard work. It becomes a lot of I I I. I think I would uh, recommend and take this learning. Convert that I to we. You know, in your internal preparations and even your customer messaging. If you can bring the customer also as part of the deal team and start thinking of the benefits for the customer, as I'm selling, customer is also selling, you have, uh, you will win every deal, right? So try to convert that I to be. I think uh, let's move on. I hope I wanted to spend some time and um, as if we have some time left, we can again come back and look into any of these uh, skills. So if we move on, the third skill I would like to uh, share is about managing expectations. That's very important. You know, build your buffer zone. What do I mean by that? Uh, I think Sanjay talked, uh, you, you are leading a team and suppose you are work, uh, waiting for a purchase order from a customer, right? And you're manage, your customer tells, oh, I'll, when, when we'll give the purchase order customer, oh, by Friday, you will get it, means if, it, if today is Monday. Your, your, your manager asks, okay, when are we going to get the first purchase order? Now you need to think, are you going to give the answer as Friday? or you need to keep a buffer, right? You need to manage the expectations. You need to think well, how, uh, how comfortable you are about getting that, sticking to that line item. What I, uh, time timeline, what I do, I create a buffer there. I will tell my manager that's a question is asked. He, I will say most likely it seems I will get it by Tuesday or Wednesday. You know? So what I have done, I've taken stress out of myself. If I get it on Friday, Everybody will be happy, uh, happy if I share the purchase order on Friday rather than on Wednesday, right? And I will not have the manager putting on my back and calling me on Friday evening, where is the purchase order? That gives me peace of mind. And not only that, I'm reducing the level, number of fire. I'm able to use the time on doing something beneficial or working on another deal or, and not even annoying the customer. Hey, where is the purchase order? Where is the purchase order? Maybe it comes on Monday very nicely, smoothly. So everybody is happy there. So it's very important, I would say, it, as you mature, manage expectations internally and externally with your customers. If your customers is coming, hey, when can you do this? Send me an invoice or send me a quote. You know internally you can prepare by tomorrow, but you need to then decide what's the timeline you can give. Right? Right. Uh, Sujay, so if I may interrupt, if that's yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, sure. How are you doing? Thank you so much for this session. No problem. Perfect. Uh, I think uh, on some level, I, I definitely agree with you, but you know, it, it more often than not, what happens is, yes, you have a certain level of uh, understanding that a PO might come in today, right? Or on a Friday night. And, uh, but you know, there are large number of scenarios where, you know, you, you don't even get it on Monday, right? So at that point in time, how exactly would you tackle it? No, I think that's where that's where the, the judgment comes in. What is the timeline I set internally, right? Knowing the customer from past experience. If, that's why I said I will tell internally it's coming on Wednesday, not even on Monday, right? So mm -hmm. I'm giving that as an example. What I mean to say in sales life, there will be many of, of places where we are setting expectations internally at the customer. And we need to create our buffer zone. This is what I've learned over the years. If you are not in a buffer zone, you're already always running. Either someone, everybody is chasing you and you will not be able to think and apply your brains and you are only doing transactions. Customer is chasing for quotes or things like that. Internal finance or managers is chasing for things and you are always running. You are not thinking then. So this is just an example. So if you have to think, you can only differentiate when you think, then you can do better actions. If you're just running, Helter and skelter, you're not able to make the right decisions and the smart decisions. And for you to get the time to make those decisions, you need to build up your buffer zone. Right, right. Got it. Sure. Wherever you can, maybe some places you cannot. That is also true. But 
try to do that to the most possible rather than just not building it, right? There might be very easy places where you can build up your buffer zone. Many places, I will say it's 80, 20 rules. Many right. places right. I, see, I can build up a buffer zone for myself. Sure, so sure. That sure. will give the peace of mind that then you can think not only about this transaction, other transactions, bring thought into the process. Absolutely. So is it safe to assume that it's something that you gain out of experience, you know, over the years in interacting with multiple clients? Safe to assume? Yeah, that? not only multiple, I intern, I, this I actually learned from one of my customers. He told me. <laughs> right. I was telling him, this is this. He said, no, that's my buffer zone. And he said he learned it from his manager. I'm just trying to share it with you. People who are early of a career, maybe there are a lot of experienced people here who are already doing that. But sure. I was in my early in the career, I was just I was just passing timeline. A customer told this, I tell the manager, I tell internally, this is that, this is that. And then I am squeezed all over whenever there is delay. Then it leads to dissatisfaction all the places. Absolutely. And even making quotes, making prices, expectations, all the places, right? And this also comes in even family and personal life, how you manage expectations. So I always believe in under promise over deliver, right? Okay. Right. So you need to try to see where, where, how you can under promise and over deliver rather than the other way around. And, and I, I see not to get wrong. I've always been in India learning that I see in India, there's many places it's opposite way happens. When mm -hmm. I get to, oh, it's, it, it will happen. Right. So, but if you come to a professional sales career and also a global career, you have to build up your brand. I think there are sessions on building up your brand. And brand building is upon when people trust you. So when you give them a word, you are able to deliver. And there are so many uh, variances here that we as salespeople do not have control over, right? Sure. So how do you how do you build up your brand and you're able to keep your promises? A uh, metric that I measure is called promise to deliver ratio. If you can manage it internally with customers and et cetera, how many promises you're making and how you're delivering to those promises. That, that is about your personal brand, your company brand, and et cetera. Right. Okay. right, right. And then how exactly do you, I mean, I'm sorry to digress, but. No, no. Uh, yeah, but how do you exactly gauge these matrices? Like, is it more? It, it, it's a personal count for yourself. Okay, how am I doing on my own promise to deliver? If I promise something to someone by some time, am I able to do it or not? Right. right? Got and it. even if I'm going with, with the customers, because customers will feel, oh, this person just talks and tells and doesn't deliver. Sure. either on time or value or whatever right sure Sajay. thank you so much no no problem good i i hope that is a learning um at least it was a learning for me uh, mid midway into my career uh, of, and it is difficult sometimes because you how do you manage and build that buffer and play in that buffer term but more and more you can do that manage expectations under promise and over deliver i believe you will reduce the level of stress. You will you will uh, strengthen your brand and build success around you. Okay, and it also connects to the team activity. People will have expectations on you working as part of the deal and how they will become successful. Okay, let's move to skill number four. In the interest of time, so focus on your RGAs. Can anybody speak and say what is RGA? Does anybody know? Maybe a quiz question on the spot. What is RGA? Have you heard of it before or practice it? It's nothing like color, red, green, amber, not like that. No guesses? So let's move on. So RGA stands for revenue generating activities. Okay. So in sales, we are measured on revenues and the business that are on numbers, revenue, you can take revenue as a synonym for deal value or whatever, whatever number or metric you are chasing, right? In a sales life, in a day, if you look at your calendar, you can see how much time you're spending on RGAs or not, right? You are maybe spending time on filing your expense report. Is that a RGA? No, right? Your, your boss asks for a report, something you are spending time on doing that. Is that a RG or no, right? So everything else is noise. So focus on RG and more so in today's time, higher inflation is coming, higher competition, customers might be spending less. So you need to really focus and sharpen up how much time daily you're spending on RGS. 
And if you are spending too much, take up a discussion with your managers or whatever people that this is the non-RGA for me. Should I be spending time because sales is a costly resource for the organization? If you are asking me to do this, it doesn't lead to RG revenues as I see it. Correct me if I'm wrong or help me reduce it. Do something. Right? You agree? Anybody? You know, this is a very uh, insight. So look into your calendar. Maybe the calendar, if you're having invites in a calendar, you can put a suffix on it or prefix as you like, it's RGA for you or not. Do some color coding in your calendar. Outlook does that. Do that in your calendar. Oh, this is RGA activity, non-RGA activity. And sit over in the weekend and see in the past week how much time you spent on non-RGAs. Hmm? Collect it and take it back to your manager in your next appraisal cycle or monthly review or a weekly review that last week I spent so much hour. They even may not know. It will be insightful for them. And everybody I'm telling you will love to reduce the non-RGA time for a salesperson. Huh? So, but if you have that matrix, you can have a very fruitful discussions with anybody in the organization. They will see, see it through those lenses. Fine? Sure. Any, any, any comment, thoughts from anyone? How much time do you think you're spending on your non-RG or RG activities in the last week? Or are you measuring it? Well, if I have to make a guess from the top of my head, I haven't really calculated it, to be honest. But if I have to make a guess, it's somewhere between 20 to 25% is where the RGA lies, for me at least, according to my calendar. Okay, 20% is revenue generating activities, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So that's a significant noise there in the system, not to just go against you, but it's a, a good metric for you to capture and a good metric for you to have discussion with your managers and different stakeholders in the organization that should I be spending so much time on RJ? Is it good for the organization? So right. take the discussion, that perspective, not for you, but again, bringing the we, bring... So these skills are all connected. So bring the skill number one, it's a team sport. So your manager is also part of the team, right? Uh, so right. then they will appreciate that discussion and then support you and reducing that non-RGS. Get, we get so many meetings invite. Oh, people say, oh, just come and listen in. But that all adds to non-RGS, right? Absolutely. Why should I be in a listen-only meeting? Duly noted. Yeah. So try to do that in a personal goal and take up discussions in again in the team spirit, not as a I bring we into the discussion internally. Should we be doing this? Skill number five, why change? I think this is our biggest competitor when you're trying to sell something on selling to your customers or wherever in your life, personal life, wherever. Why change? Frankly, believe people say change is constant, but as human beings, it's, it's in our human nature that we don't like change. Okay, so nothing to do against someone who doesn't like change. That's that's how we all humans are. On the other side, I, as I told you, the customer is also selling something. That's that's also a human being. So you need to understand and have the discussion of why change. You know, and I I I do a two by two matrix. I couldn't draw it, but um, I could. But just simply put, you can draw y axis and x axis. Y what will happen? If, if you change and what will not happen if you change, right? So positive negative of changing and positive negatives of non, not change. So if you can capture that in a, um, in a matrix and you were able to get your own views clear that what will the customer gain if they change or not change and what will the customer lose if they change or not change or even if the manager or any discussion. So, Keep considering why change as the biggest bottleneck or biggest competitor rather than your competition. If a customer is buying a competitor product, at least they're moving to change. Then it's a different question how you win against that competitor. But most of the cases, and it again becomes to non-revenue generating after you spend six months in a deal, customer doesn't do anything. And then they say, oh, I will take the decision six months later on. Something will not change. So if you can do all those discussions beforehand and investigate further on that why change aspect. You will have better argument points and discussion points with the customer and enlighten them. What will they lose if they don't change? And what will they gain if they don't change? Both from a positive and a negative side, right? If you don't buy this or do this in the next one month, this is what you and your company is going to lose. If there's nothing to gain, there's something to lose. 
So there's always something to lose or, or something to gain. So if you can't find the gain part, try to find the lose part and then do the messaging on that aspect. And, and even the starting itself, right? Because, oh, you were trying to buy this solution, but why change? Do a negative reverse question. What will you gain if you want to do this, buy this product or service or whatever? And if you don't dis do this, what will happen? Why don't you do this six months later and see what the customer says? Then we know whether I should spend time on this deal or not, whether it should be as a RG activity or a non RG for me. It's always means be upfront. I, I know initially myself, you, we don't feel oh, we are living in hope. Ah, Lele, customer will buy it here. Let's see. I think it will happen. I think I feel it's all I, but there's no data driven points in it. Why the change will happen. Even we don't change in our personal life. If we don't like to go to the gym, we are not able to change ourselves to the, go to the gym. If we know it is good for our health, but we are not doing it. So it's, it's not always that if it is good, it will happen. Right? Any thoughts or comments? Anybody feels differently? Silence is golden. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Thank you. Uh, I'm 100% once again agree with you. Uh, change uh, is uh, very, very much required. If you see, when I was started my career, that time I'm uh, using all these things, uh, handwriting, means sending PCR through the courier, sending expense through the courier, uh, making all these things manually. But uh, world revolving like anything and computerized has came. So I have to learn the computer systems uh, make my report, my expense, make my presentation. So change is always uh, not so easy, but change is required to survive in the uh, industry or world. Which yeah. I feel personally. Yeah. But yeah, and to add to that, for a salesperson, it's a waste of time if the customer decides not to change, right? Buying our product or service is a change for the customer. If they don't have it, buying something new or changing from a competition product to our product, right? But human beings, we are also lazy, right? We say we do next month, next year. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, so we have to find the reasons why the customer should change. What will they benefit or they will lose if they don't change? If you're not able to have that clarity, I think we are living on hope as a salesperson that this deal will happen or the customer will buy our product or service. This, this why change can be put in different perspective, but since it's a sales meeting here, salespeople, so I'm giving you the sales examples. But don't be shy to ask those questions. Take help of your team, take help of your managers or colleagues who have been different. That this is the situation. Why will the customer buy it? Do a negative reverse session within your organization. I am I means do a role play that okay, I'm trying to sell this company this, but can you role play and tell me why will you buy this? Not our product, first of all, why will you change? So you can look into the finances of the company. If it's a public company, look into their annual reports and read and understand why will they need to change. And not only as a company, why will that individual need to change? Because in many companies also, if the company is full of, it's, it's a combination of people like people like you and me. And, and it's not that if a company needs to do something, that individual will do it. There are many people within a company also who are lazy. Our customer could be a lazy person or they could have their own political reason or a different biasness that they want to change or not change. So it's very important to find those, okay? And so dig deeper, so go deep. And this is where again, it's connect. If you have your buffer, you will spend time in going deeper. If you have not created your buffer and not managing expectations, there's no time for us to go deeper. You are, we are just running one deal after another, just managing transactions and becoming a post person, postman, right? I use it in a negative thing, trying to tell myself that I should not become a postman. This is not the job I wanted of becoming a postman. I'm a salesperson. What does the postman do? Just takes from left hand to right hand from one person to another, either document or information, right? So if you're not creating your buffer zone, you'll end up into postman and you'll not be able to dig deeper, 
think about why change and all the thinking that you need to bring into your sales process. Okay. So these are all connected threads. You know? So don't think these silos, you need to do one to do other, help you with others. Another skill that I have learned, and even uh, I hope to also to share with you too, I think as a salesperson, which I have been also doing, oh, jump to presenting the solution. Oh, we just heard one word, oh, customer needs this. I have a solution. I have a solution, right? Whatever product or service you are selling. We are very much curious or you are very much impatient to jump to solution. But that's what I have learned over the years that you have to first sell the problem. Because only when you sell the problem, you will be able to go and understand why change, spend more time. And, because with that, when you sell the problem, you will be able to quantify the problem for the buyer. How big is the problem for the buyer? Why should the buyer change or not? Right? If, 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 if the buyer doesn't solve this problem, what will happen? So you uh, try to sell the problem more. Then you'll be able to quantify, get to get to understand the emotions of the person, get to understand the political dynamics in the organization. But if you are very fast in going to the solution, we have lost all the opportunity to bring all those learnings. And many times we are seeing as symptoms, right? Which we do in for differentiating between a problem and a symptom is very dif difficult. You need time and discussions and customers you will get a deal if you're solving the problem rather than the symptom, right? Symptom is a small cell, easy cell. Okay, if I have cough right now, I'll someone will say, oh, buy a cough syrup and it will go. That's a treatment of the symptom. But if I have to go down to the problem, maybe I have something in my lungs, water is choking and I have to go to a specialist and that's a costlier solution and much more deeper solution. So sometimes we try to just put a bandit to the symptom, sell something small and move away. Oh, I've solved it. But the problem will reoccur. But because, because we haven't solved the problem. Why we haven't solved the problem? We haven't focused on spending time on the problem. We just jump to the solution. Why we have jumped to the solution? Because we know what we are selling. Okay, I am selling this product and service. You buy this, that's it. But we could buy, sell more or become more helpful to the customer, build more relationship, ensure that they become successful when we spend time on selling the problem rather than selling the solution. Uh, so Jay, if you could just probably give us an example that probably you faced such a scenario in your career. Yeah, uh, if you can, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, means examples could be very different from different people. Um, not sure if people will, uh, uh, feel for that example, but let me think. Uh, that's a good question. Mm, what do I say? So, um, I sell uh, today. Um, means I sell uh, products which are actually data management products. So I can give a uh, example from myself. So if there is a symptom, a customer comes and say, tells me that you know uh, this. They suppose they have to run a marketing campaign and they say, oh, all my marketing data is not good. Sure. Right? So. One way you can say, oh, I can help you with the right marketing data and so that your, uh, your next campaign becomes better. Mm -hmm. That's a simple solution. But sure. the other way you could dig deeper, you know, can you tell me why has this problem been there? Why is your marketing data so poor? Where is this marketing data coming from? Has it been re uh, this problem? How long are you facing? Past one year, two year? Maybe there are challenges with five or six uh, areas of business functions which are giving you this information. Maybe your web form is collecting the wrong information. So I get to uh, understand or the, even the person gets to understand the bigger, the completeness of the problem. And if I, as a company, I do that means we can solve many areas so we can expand our solution to the customer. Right, right, sure, thank you. It's also, yeah, so it depends upon what you are selling and what services you are providing, but it, it could be uh, in many other aspects that you can bring more, uh, uh, you can deepen the solution you are providing by spending more time on the problem and understanding the problem better. Got it. And uh, that, that, will, that will also depend upon the sales value, the ROI you are able to deliver, the return on investment, or even your probability of closing the deal, right? 
right right so that was the intention of my question actually to yeah. be missed uh, the roi right so i mean spending a lot of time on something that is going to be minuscule is doesn't make really sense right so i mean if there is a value addition that is going to pose as a good uh, or rather you know for for a very good deal for instance right digging deeper would definitely make a larger impact is what i reckon so yeah yeah exactly because the smaller ones are the symptoms if you are doing a like i gave you a very health problem it's a cough it's a cough syrup you just go everybody can diagnose a cough right and give a diagnosis for a cough syrup go and buy a cough syrup but someone to tell you and that this is a problem with your heart needs proper or your lungs needs proper due diligence and a specialist and that solution is also a costly solution but that's what going to cure you right right right, right. Okay. So, I, I so if I am a yeah giving from a personal world because health world everybody if I am a surgeon I if I get a cough or if I am a heart, lung specialist I am a cough if, if someone comes with a cough I will not tell that person okay take this cough syrup and it will go right <laughs> right doesn't it sure sure yeah but a pharmacist if you go they will give you a cough syrup and say okay take this cough syrup but <laughs> does it solve the problem that's the whole thing naturally of course so try okay. to spend because this is a thing means i would not guess but maybe if you can take your self assessment how much you have been doing on selling the problem rather than jumping to the solution very quickly sure yeah yeah, yeah. got it thank you so ask more why is different layers of why why do you want this uh, you know why how it will benefit you right right thank you okay. thank you sir yeah no please let's move on another thing this is more of a soft aspect you know i think some who was telling sanjay right, your manager and every sales person has a manager you know i i try to manage my manager and you need to do that if you want to become successful and be happy and if you have to do that you have to think about the success of your manager as well and once you do that uh, i think they will also like you you will have a much better sales career in the company and you will get much more opportunities uh, within the company itself many times we feel oh, the manager is uh, oh just micromanaging and then you have to try to have a discussion about what makes a manager successful what are the concerns of the person if you are able to do it and develop that bond with your manager in a sales role i think uh, that will uh, reduce a lot of level of stress and you need to feel for the person that why is that person he or she so stressed or or uh, giving a hard time so if you can able to manage it and make your manager successful i think uh, your sales uh, life will be much better that's what i try to do and be proactive about it in sending reports or giving feedback or whatever is happening on the deal rather than they coming and chasing it because you have to appreciate their manager is also asking them that question hmm? so this is more of a soft factor skill i wanted to bring in what i have learned think about it if it makes sense for you but if you are able to do that you will have a very good alignment with your manager and that your manager will take care of your success within the organization okay any thoughts on this anybody who has been doing this or feel this is valuable okay no problem so and then the i think last one i will i left for my presentation is about taking care of your our health your health because that is critical and many aspects if if it means a sales person needs to be a healthy person i believe because if you are unhealthy you don't have time of closing deals spending time with your customers your manager or team will give the deals to someone else uh you are not able to think properly uh, so i think this is very much critical for in a sales person role it, because it could be a stressful role you need to manage all those expectations connecting to that not take taking it on to yourself being think it's a team effort like they say in the airplane right if there is a um, uh, you have to put your mask on before you put the mask on the others right so if you have to become successful you have to manage your health first both physical and mental health um, i i believe 
a healthy person is very much needed to become a healthy sales person so exercise take time on upon yourself so that stress doesn't eat you and that's very challenging for a sales person that's a good or bad part in a sales role because we are all driven by numbers our performance is very transparent to the organization everybody right it's it's all about numbers numbers can be seen and measured there's no hiding behind any other soft factor so it's very critical that we are able to uh, take um, time to be physically fit and mentally fit so i think that's one of the important skill i wanted to leave all of you with it this gets self uh, mostly ignored many times um uh, everything else gets a priority if we are not managing expectations not creating the buffer we are running helter skelter here and there and then after that the family life comes in you have to take time and see that if i am not healthy i will not become a successful sales person all the likes that we uh, took from the poll why we want to be in sales that will not be successful then it will become a lose lose game you will not be able to think properly and take make the right decisions okay i think that's the last one i had but uh, now i think we can uh, we have 9 minutes or left we did lot of discussions during the session itself but if anybody would like to share and talk so give you fl the floor back to you or anybody has any questions yeah yeah i'm having a hello yeah Yeah, are you giving uh, all these things in PPT format or any format so that we, uh, when we are there, I can go th go through? Because really, this is very very important uh, point which you discuss, and uh, uh, we can become a very familiar after practice only. Yeah, sure. I I can share with this uh, Jonas team, and they can share with it with you. I didn't think. Yeah, that's that's good to know. You want like this? Thank you. Guys, anybody has any questions for Sujoy? Anything that you want to share, uh, as in your experience, or any question around the eight skills that we just discussed? Please feel free to ask your questions. Yeah, anybody? Sure. One more question is coming in my mind. You have told me this is the teamwork, and I am completely agree with you. Then how uh, uh, we are going to make a strong team or team management? yeah i think uh, that's a very good question that there's a lot of aspects into it not only sales it is also about human resource development and leadership right uh, but i feel uh, uh, if you take from a sales perspective uh, showing the success for all how everybody's success is or failure is interconnected right that i will win only if you will win right and how i am going to help you uh with what you are doing so giving it back right so i think that clarity is very important many times like in sales people do not know how their activity is going to help this sales deal and ultimately that's going to help the company so they need to if you can make them feel that whatever is doing they are doing is for their benefit also this is how the loop closes and they are going to win if you are i always try to create that win win scenario think from the other person how is the other person going to win so if you are able to capture that and share it back and have an alignment with that other person and they also believe yes it is their win win too then you don't need to drive them they'll be self driven and i think that's key to making a good team in the sales world self driven people because they have a clarity of their win and they are helping you not only for your win and the company's win but their win as well hope i could answer that briefly uh, yeah 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 i'm agree but uh, uh, suppose the different suppose six uh, member of team is there and one is having very negative attitude how i will take him in my fold that is the my question Very yeah, then, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's more sitting down with that person and understanding why is that person having a negative attitude, right? Is it because he feels that he or she is in a wrong role, 
doesn't want to do it or doesn't like the company or even doesn't like you right so so it, it could be a more brainstorming and sitting down discussion right but this goes more into that team management i would say and more time needs to be spent in understanding the whys of that person i say so again if you take that as a problem i will say spend more time on the problem i do not know that person but there will be reasons uh, for that person you can draw that in a why change kind of a thing click, click create a picture for why that person can what will the person benefit from becoming negative to positive right what will positive things will happen to the person or what will not happen to the person so you can take the uh, skill of why change and have a discussion with that person as well Thank you. Hi, good evening. Yeah. Uh, I have one question regarding that to keeping a buffer. Don't you think, think keeping a buffer shows you as an inefficient person? No, it depends upon what context, right? How will, uh, what do you mean? Can you give an example of your question? Then I can address that. For example, uh, I have to give a quotation to a client and it yeah. usually takes uh, two, three days. It's a right. project quotation. Right. But you are uh, telling a client you will submit in a seven days. So client, uh, it's a, if he's in a B2B business, he knows how much time it takes. So won't it show you as an inefficient person? Could be. Then you About don't do it. You don't do it. So it doesn't apply in all situations, I believe. But if you feel that, then you can ask the customer, why does it need two or three? If the customer expectation is two or three, then I will play it reverse internally. I will tell internally that, oh, I need the quotation in two days. So okay. it depends where, where is your reference frame. If you feel the customer is expecting in three days a quotation, my internal communication will be that we need to send out the quotation in two days. Right? Got it. So it Thanks. depends where your reference point of expectation is. Right. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, Jay, uh, I have a question. Yeah. So, I really like the point about the highlighting the positive and negative of buying and not buying our products. Kind of a pain and pleasure kind of thing. And in the sales, we have always heard that whoever controls the uh, conversation wins. But how would you uh, I mean, I don't know how to frame this question, but how would you handle such situation post sales? Because once the sale is done, we have seen customers started getting dominant uh, in in terms of delivery. So, how would you? What are your thoughts on that? Hmm. Customer dominant in terms of delivery means they asking faster delivery or etc. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay, I want a faster delivery, right? Mm -hmm. But then you can discuss that. Why are they asking for a faster? I will, I will take that kind of an angle. Okay, if, 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 if the committed delivery was 30 days, they want in 20 days. Why do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't know. If there is a positive to make, oh, I couldn't make you 20 days, but there's an additional service charge for you. I'm just telling you. But it's more try to, I would then uh, ask the why question. Okay, why do you want a faster delivery? So asking more whys of it till, till they are out of their whys. Then I will get more insights why they are doing it. If, if it is a really true reason I could empathize, then I'll gain, gain, gain a positive uh, tick mark from him that, okay, he needs to help, help me later on as well. Okay, I could try to make it in 20 days, but you know, can you become a reference for me? So I could always ask back something to the customer. Hey, um, you know, there's another deal going or something might come in the, hey, I can make it happen in 20 days, in 30 days, but I will need your help back, help with this another deal I'm having. They are trying to look for a similar product. Can mm -hmm. you please come and talk to that customer? So try to then see if you're able to, if you're able to help your customer, what you could get back in return in, in another deal or another situation, right? Or there could be, or you need to connect with someone else in the company for the next deal. Right? You can say, hey, can you connect me to the CFO or the CEO of your company or give an internal recommendation? So always try to think what you can ask back. And that magnitude, you can decide when you know 
what benefit that person will get from that 20 days delivery rather than 30 days. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's a bigger gain, then you know that other person should also expect to do something big for you in return. Yeah, more of, I mean, I am from a IT background, so I have seen such kind of situation where uh, we get the project, then at the back end, there is a communication gap between the sales team and a technical team. And it's it comes it it comes like a bomb, like you have to deliver yeah, in yeah. these 10 days and 20 days. So developer that gets, happens. yeah. It, it's more yeah. of a project delivery question than a sales question, I would say, but uh, certainly I see that. Yeah, but okay. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah. yeah. Good. Anything else? Anybody else? I can go over five minutes, 10 minutes. That's fine with me. If anybody has any other situation that they would like to share or discuss. Guys, anybody has any questions for Sujay? I think no questions today. So I think uh, we've actually got the insights and the life lessons that you've shared out of your own experiences, considering the fact that you spent almost about two decades in sales and, you know, interacting with so many customers across industry and selling multiple products and solutions. We really appreciate uh, your, uh, you know, squeezing out time for us. Yep. Uh, any questions anybody has? No? Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Sujoy, for being part of the Juno community. And thank you, everybody, for uh, attending this wonderful session. So please make sure that we connect on next Saturday, same time at 6 o'clock sharp with another industry expert and, of course, discussing another insightful topic. So see you till then and have a great weekend or whatever you left with. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice one. Wish you all the best. Take care. Thanks Bye. so much, Sujoy. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.